What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to yet again the season finale. You're the headliner yet again, Josh, of uh, At Home with Mark, season seven, so like episode eight. Taylor Swift, Taylor Swift era tours, you know, the era <laughs> tour. Topping you're you're more, more important than that because we're talking about dolls today. So, um, dolls. So we're we're gonna talk about we've done this with Pearl Jam, we did this with our favorite records from the '90s, and we both love Dawes. So I thought it'd be fun to talk about this boot, this band. Um, can you tell me how you came across this band? Because I don't know if we've ever talked about that. Oh my gosh! Yeah, I've never thought of how I found them. Where did I hear them? Hold on, this is hilarious. Because I feel so entrenched in it. Right. Where did I first hear Dawes? Oh, I know. I know. Okay. There was a guy that worked with me here for years. Who's also, he's an amazing songwriter. And uh, he has some records. Zach, Zach Sims was his name. But Zach, he let me hear. I, I believe he played uh, most people. Oh, okay. And it was that riff. And I remember being like. I remember, like, I was walking, I was like, I can't, uh, whatever that is. Yeah. That yeah. And, I, and I remember us, I would play it and I would always play it wrong. And he'd be like, no, 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 no. You're, cause I would just play it as like a goof, you know, like when you pick up a guitar, yeah. you just kind of play. And I would, I went through like a year after he let me hear that. And then I got into that record and I just kept playing it wrong and it became like this joke around the shop like i would never play it right the timing was off and he would <laughs> he was very like he was very upset every time at how off i would play the one because it's a it's very dawes it's like it sounds easy and then you play it and you're like it's weird yeah that's the thing man yeah I, I was just talking to one of my friends the other day about i was driving uh about i had a 45 minute drive the other night and I was listening uh -huh. to all these records and stuff and listening to a bunch of live stuff. And what I realized what I don't do well that I need to take a note from Taylor is he's so good at telling a story when he's improvising. So good. Very good. And yeah. there's not many guitar players that can do what he does. Like, it's almost like he his ear is so good. He knows his intervals. He knows where to grab the notes that he's hearing before he plays them. And that's something yeah. I could take a lesson from for sure. So he, yeah, he's a, you know, we'll get into this just criminally underrated and yeah. he's really, he's such an original, like he feels like such an original guitar player. It's like super familiar. Like nothing feels crazy. Like I think when you hear phrases like original guitar player, you think like, I, I don't even know. Is that like bucket head or like, Malmsteen, or like you, you think of something that's like, ah, like he doesn't, you know, he's very comfortable. Like you could, you could listen to him, and you're not gonna be like your mind's not gonna melt with mystery. It's just like he's everything he plays is so like, it feels effortless. It's kind of like frustratingly simple parts that are perfect for ever. Yeah, he's like that guy. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I and I truly feel like he doesn't. Ha I feel like it's pretty natural. Like I've been around him a couple times. He came by JHS pretty early. I think they had just put out. Uh, I think they had probably were all going to die or favorite bands, and like he'd come by and we were sitting around, and he you just get the vibe like that. He just kind of records exactly like you think. He probably takes a take or two and they move on or something, and it's kind of frustrating. Like right. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, they're all so talented, yeah. and uh, I mean, I'm super bummed that Lee Pardini left, but yeah, what are you gonna do, man? I mean, I, it's like that happens. Bands, you know, people leave, people come along, but I mean, I think yeah. they're gonna they're gonna be fine. I mean, I, but to lose Wiley and Lee in the same year, I was just like, oh no, it's a lot. Oh, no, yeah, that's a lot. But but they'll be all right. They'll be all right. So what we're gonna do, folks, is we're gonna go through and uh talk about each record and talk about our favorite songs on the records and josh has a playlist if you want to scan this i'm gonna hold this up for a second if you want to scan so this you can through, we're going through eight records right basically yeah we got a hustle right this is um, intense i know yeah 
scan that QR and that's like that's my ultimate dolls like I just want to hear dolls all day. That's the that's my list. That's the playlist. Well, let's jump back to 2009 with North Hills and see uh I want to hear your thoughts on this record cuz they're they're all so different too. That's what's great about this band. Yeah. Uh, you may go. Just start going. Yeah, for it. go for I, it, bro. My, I put I I had so much fun thinking about this. Um, the same, a little more than the Pearl Jam one, because the Pearl Jam stuff is so known. It's a little easier to be like, oh, you know that record. It's like the Dawes mm. stuff is still pretty unknown to most people I know. You know, even you, I couldn't believe you'd never heard of them. There's so many similarities, I think, in like what I heard you playing and stuff. Yeah. But anyway, I think Dawes, they have to kind of be, uh, they've been around for a while. They're kind of like, you see this first record, the North Hills record, it's definitely Americana, right? I think you'd like, you would have to throw that label on it, and whether you like it or not. It's some form of like that loose country Americana, the band, a little wilco which Pat played on this record. Did you know that? No. Pat, Pat from Wilco is actually playing on. He plays a lot of the. I believe he plays keys on the whole record. Oh snap! Um, I did not know that. I think he does. Yeah, and so I think these first three records are like. It's almost like a totally different Dawes, and then you go into another era, but it's always Dawes. Every every good band kind of does this. But Dawes is interesting. Like you can straight up love that first record. And I have friends who quit listening to them like five records in because they really? just don't like new stuff. I, I have several friends that are like, yeah, I just I just listen to the first records over and over. And they're like happy with that because they love that Dawes. Right. You can do this with any band. We I talked agree. about this with Pearl Jam, you know. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. That that no code drop off, <laughs> that hard shell. Yeah. No, <laughs> no no code was like, yeah, we're done. It's crazy <laughs> how many people. Yeah. So, do you think that uh, all your favorite bands are all going to die? Was the no code? I I actually this I knew we would get into this. I don't know. I don't. I mm. think it might have been. We're all going to die. I. It's kind of but. Do you hear it like the production gets really good, which I love. I, I'm a fan of it. It's almost like, you know, some people would be like, this happens with Death Cab. It's like Death Cab puts out, I think, plans and everyone's like, they sold out. The records sound too good. <laughs> yeah. And it's not that the first records didn't sound good. It's that you start hearing a band that you've loved that had a little lo-fi action that makes you love them. And it was per with Dawes. I think it's masterfully done. They wanted to sound old a little bit. You know, it's loose and old sounding. And then I think something happens like in the favorite bands or we're all going to die where it's like they're going in and they're producing some records, man. And they're like pulling out some studio. And it's like big, big. It just the drums feel big and the guitars start feeling polished. And I love that. Yeah, me too. I think I think some people were like, I don't know. That's the vibe I've gotten from some close friends who like dolls. It's interesting because you know, my favorite record is We're All Gonna Die. So and that's okay. the first that's the first record I heard that turned me on okay. to them. I mean I told Griff that because Griff was on my show. Yeah. And I and I told him that's the first and he's like, That's the first record you got into. And I was like, Yeah. And he was like, Oh my God, I'm glad you <laughs> stick around. <laughs> Cause some people are like, Ugh. but I think that that's a beautiful record. But like North Hills has, you know, when my time comes on it, like, uh, you know, I mean, Western Skyline, yeah. when my time comes, take me out of the city. Those are my favorite tracks on there on the playlist that when my time comes is, yeah, it's, it's such a, gr it should be on every playlist of that genre until the end of the world. Like it is a, it should be right next to any, you know, legendary Ryan Adams, Wilco, all that stuff. Like mm -hmm. it's good as it gets in that genre yeah i feel like the in, like the thing that you said about it the band and like that whole laurel canyon vibe and the thing that they get yeah. kind of compared to and I, I think so like when you call my name is my probably my favorite song on that record because it has that vibe of like it, it could have been in the last waltz you know what i mean like yeah. 
that vibe and that yeah. song it fits perfectly <clears throat> in there. I think that Dawes, they're at a point now where I wouldn't be surprised if we see a documentary or at least a really well-written book by a fan mm. about the influence of like the the new LA thing that happened. Uh, you know, there there has been Dawes is, in my opinion, the front of the new LA thing we have seen. So, like, I think I talk about this a lot with elect like circuits and stuff, but genres like. I've done some episodes on, you know, where did distortion come from or whatever. There's this thing where everything builds on the back of the last thing and kind of this gives permission and somebody goes a little further, a little further, a little further. Like, you know, somebody turned their amp up a little and then you heard you heard overdrive and then somebody's a little more and then 10 years later you have fuzz. And that's like, that's kind of how music works. I think like your Madison Cunningham's like what we think of Blake Mills now, who was originally in the first Dolls, they're good friends. All of that new California, like Mason Stoops, that vibe, like Dawes feels like the grandfather. Yeah. To me. Yeah. There's something about like a new LA sound. And I think Dawes is at the is part of that like rootsy Laurel Canyon guitar songwriting. You know what I mean? You like you feel that vibe? It feels like a hundred percent, dude. There's yeah. not there's really nothing in LA going on at the beginning of their rec the first few records. It's almost like they were they they made it work. Because right. LA is so weird musically, especially when those albums came out. Yeah. I mean they I can see what you're saying because it feels like they made that vibe cool again. Yeah. Almost like people yeah, like, forgot, you know. Yeah, I, I think there's the it's like the California version of what people were used to Wilco, but like Wilco's weird. Wilco's kind of an avant garde band. Mm -hmm. They yeah. were like, we're gonna do that scene, but it's like pure. And it, that hadn't been done. I hadn't nobody had really done it. No. You know, it's like what if Neil Young suddenly appeared again with like Crosby Stills and Nash and like some others? It's like what it feels like. It's really cool. Yeah. No, I do I love it. I mean, I can't thank my friend john enough for playing that for me playing you know we're all gonna die yeah. we were we were coming home from seeing pearl jam i think i told you that and he put it on and it blew my mind i was like why okay. where have i been under a rock apparently yeah. um yeah. all right so since we got to get cruising through these so nothing is wrong 2011 give me your thoughts on that one this was uh, this record's so important to me in some weird ways. It affected JHS pedals. Like I ended up making pedals because of this record. I really like, yeah, like I he had I had heard the stuff, I got really into him. I went beyond, you know, Zach introduced me, made fun of me for playing that song wrong. It became a thing. And then I got really into him. And then they came through on tour. I went to the show, he came by the shop. And then I remember asking him. We got this tradition where, like, we all we go to Nam. None of us really like Nam because it's exhausting as an exhibitor. And I remember we have this like weird. We had we don't do it anymore, but we would go to Nam and drive around in the rental car and listen to certain songs that were like somehow related to the misery of Nam. We be it became <laughs> a joke. like we kind of had a playlist that was like I freaking hate Nam, so let's listen to this music. It was like funny. Some of it's funny, yeah. but one of them is time spent in Los Angeles because for JHS, you take this big company trip and you go to LA, you're actually in Anaheim and it's just miserable. Like it just became misery. And that song, there's the line, you've got a special kind of sadness that only comes from time spent in Los Angeles. It became like our Nam theme song. Yeah. So when it came, I was sharing some of this and I was like, what are you, what's the vibrato? Because I immediately was like, the, the album starts, and I was like, that's a VB2. And he goes, yeah, it's a VB2. And I'm like, I never turn it off. And I became, that song, Time Spent in Los, Time Spent in Los Angeles, affected the Emperor, ultimately the Madison Cunningham pedal. Like, mm -hmm. I was so familiar with Vibrato because of him. I had started using it and had used it for years because of realizing, oh, like you can just leave it on. I've always wanted to do that, but it feels weird. And he does it. And then I did that. And then I met Maddie. 
it's all intertwined. It's like, so time spent in Los Angeles is one of my favorite. It might be my favorite Dolls song. It, I don't know that it is, but that record probably has my most, if you look at the playlist, it's pretty stacked. Oh, yeah. If I, in like the clever songwriting, I feel like he, similar thing to Maddie, Madison Cunningham. It's like, there's a humor in the songwriting. It's like, it's like you're hearing him tell you a story and it's funny. Like some of it's like clever and funny. I had never heard anybody quite like him. And it hits on that second record pretty hard. Oh, yeah. No, he's masterful. I mean, his <laughs> lyrics are, I would say, modern day lyricist. He's one of the best right now. Yeah. Period. It's like storytelling 101, really clever. Nothing's like the guitars are so up front but like it's not the subject like it's it's so good these these first two records yeah i, I think i can't say enough about it yeah and i think too josh like they're so like you know how there's like a bonus track version online that you can there's uh -huh. like so that song strangers getting stranger yes dude oh, oh. my favorite line it on the whole album is in that song it's um it's not that I want back all my innocence, just the joy of losing it again. Yes. I oh, love that line. You dude. know what's crazy? My playlist is like so full. I didn't even put that song in there. Like I was, I almost just put every song on the playlist. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's so good. I love that line. I love that line. I love hearing Griff sing too on how far we've come. Like there's just. There's so many great songs. A little bit of everything is on there. I mean, there's that album is is it's underrated in terms of the catalog, I think. Fire Away feels like if 38 Special was in Laurel Canyon or something. There's like this vibe. There's some, yeah, like I have so well, my way back home. If yeah. I wanted someone to me is such a clever, like sarcastic, funny song. It's so well written, you know. Mm-hmm uh it's it's great my daughter loves that song when we cruise around we'll yeah. crank that in the it's, car it's she loves so great. it yeah yeah uh and then you dump right into 2013 by the way a new album every yeah. two two uh, years man that's crazy um but yes. stories don't end again just like the continuation of building on what they've got going on what do you think about this one it feel yeah i think you have like first record and to me like emotion like the way the songs feel and the records and kind of how i heard them I, I like you i went backwards and had to come through it all like it a lot of it had already happened i never heard it it feels like that second third record could be one record like they feel they have a vibe to me yeah um just i mean yeah again i i think just beneath the surface from a window seat my bear witness might be my favorite track on that oh, i don't know it's tough i put five tracks but honestly most of these records it's like every track is so good yeah yeah and from a window oh, seat people. oh from yeah, a yeah. Window seat. and from most people feels like the greatest hit somehow that somehow isn't a hit i don't know how that works yeah it's got a haunting vibe to it too so it's kind yeah. of weird in that way but it's like when you the first time I heard it, I didn't immediately like gravitate towards it. But the more and more I listened to it, the more and more I loved it kind of thing. It's like how I feel about Ben Fold's voice when I first heard it. I was like, do I like this? Yeah. I kind of like it, but do I like it? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, um, yeah. But from from a window seat is one of my favorite live tunes when they play that live. Okay, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh. we could talk an hour about live. That's the other problem with this band. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, I the first time I saw them live, I, I at this time I was go I went I used to go to a lot of shows and then it just becomes like you know you get older kids ages and it like never works like I'm in that spot now where it's like I feel like Elvis could come back to life and personally invite me and I'd be like ah, I got dinner and there's like a soccer <laughs> thing. like but I remember s standing there and just being like. God, I love music. And it never, like, music gets so tiring sometimes in this job. But I was like, dude, this is so good. Yeah. Because it was, just, it was like, sounded like the records, but was better. And they're just freaking good. Yeah. Like, everything was good. I yeah. know. That's what my so friend said. He was like, if you like the records and you, when you see them live, you're going to lose your mind. 
Yes. And it, and it was true. Um, yeah. I'll, I'll so say that good. now, but like when Pearl Jam comes back around this year, we're going and, and <laughs> I might have yes. to fly out to you so we can go together. Cause that's That'd a show fun. you're going to. Um, but man, I got, I got to go to St. Louis. I know. I, did, I know. Remember I you told me. Yeah, we, we should go to one together though. That'd be great. That'd be so fun. Um, Hey lover, dude. Yeah. That song. And I, I think this is correct, but I think that's a Blake Mills tune that they took on and recorded. I'm pretty sure. I th- might be. So yeah, we referenced it earlier. We'll say it again. So a lot of people, Blake Mills has become, if you're not aware of Blake Mills, just go listen to Jelly Road, like his last record. It's oh, so yeah. freaking good. He's like, I remember getting into him. Uh, I crossed paths with him through the LA crew. Mason, Adam Levy was out there at the time. And all these guys play together, you know, Taylor. And he's like, Blake is like, he's he's a guitar hero that's somehow hidden. Like yeah. everyone's obsessed with him. And he's gotten into this thing with fretless and stuff. But he's also like, oh, I'm going to go play on Phoebe Bridges' record and also play trumpet. Like, he's just bizarre. Like, he's all over the place. But, yeah, apparently, I mean, not apparently, him and Taylor were Dawes first. And then they kind of split up. They grew up together, I believe. You might know. You might have read this a little more. High school. And then Simon Dawes was that band. Simon Dawes. He leaves and then Dawes. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of yep. interesting, but I highly recommend if you do like this, go listen to Blake Mills. Like it's it's the it's the LA scene that I was talking about. There's threads in there where it's like there's a there's a vibe for sure that's similar. Hi Ho is also one of the most oh, brilliant records incredible, ever. Incredible, incredible. Oh. All right, and then we move on two years later again. We're on the two year cycle. Yep. All your yep. favorite bands, which is a favorite of the fans. Um, yeah, and. I, I would say this is when they start, from what I can tell, growing up playing in jam bands and stuff. This is when I think the like Zappa, Grateful Dead thing starts to seep into their DNA. I agree. Um, yeah, and, and it's a record that I think will stand the test of time and always be relevant. It's 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 hard to beat. Yeah. It again. It's like. I get so I'm uh, I like feel physically ill and upset that people don't know this this stuff as much as other stuff like this record's so prolific. Yeah, it's uh, like in a weird way, like I'll get stoned for saying this, but it's like I'm a huge I've always loved Wilco before knowing them and stuff. And like, yeah, but like, you know, you hear a record brought up like Yankee Hotel. It has a vibe that's experimental, but like a ghost is born. You have these people will just casually talk about Wilco and it, like there's a weight to some of that. That's almost like Beatles esque influence in artists. Oh, there's yeah. things on these Dawes records. When you start it, it feels like that. And I'm like, but, but then you'll ask somebody if they've heard of them and they're like, no, I've never heard of this. And it's like, what the crap? How do you not know? About <laughs> Dude, uh, I know. And, and like when I, every time I listen to this record, I have a new favorite song. Like, I felt that I, I, I drove when you told me we were going to do this. So I had a trip to Oklahoma. I listened to every record front and back and made the playlist. And I felt the same thing. I was like, I forgot this song. This is my new favorite song. And then I would get like two more tracks down and be like, no, this is my favorite song. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, don't send me away that the even the way that that's recorded, like Griff's drums sound so yeah. good. And that like pedal guitar thing that's happening. And like that, that is like probably my favorite track now but like it, it's always been right on time that's always been my favorite yeah so i like that you mentioned the zappa thing i didn't i haven't thought that but it's like as we get going you feel you feel the jam band sickness coming upon them which is beautiful but there is a thing here that's a little more like weird zappa get the guitar some of the fuzzy stuff is like very very unique and it has the attitude. I didn't think about that. It's kind of like, it's like the Frank Zappa stuff can be so, the guitars can be so oddball in a normal sounding progression or something. And it, mm-hmm. that's going on. That's a cool thought I, I didn't quite think about. I mean, it's really apparent on Doom Scroller. But, oh, you know, yeah. yeah. But I, I think this is when it starts to seep into maybe the, and, and like the Steely Dan influence. I know those guys love Steely Dan yes. and stuff. But like, I the, would. <clears throat> 
what were you saying? No, go ahead, go ahead. No, I was going to say, I feel like this is when they were like, I think we could probably put a little of that sauce. We can put a little of that salt and pepper in these tunes. Let's start doing it, you know? It, it's like maybe you, you got to earn it or something. By this time, they have a prolific following live. Like, they're they're becoming, people are driving like 10 hours to see them, like, for right. a fact. My favorite song is To Be Completely Honest on that record. Oh, um, yeah, that hits hard, too. Yeah, yeah, that's a good one. I, again, and I can't, I have my playlist has seven. I could put every that's so good. Yeah, yeah, can't think about it now. Oh, that whole vibe. I mean, there, there's that. there's so many stretched tunes on this, too. Like, people might not realize that they like they stretch and there's like improvisational sections that are happening in these tunes. Yeah, but again, Taylor's so good at like crafting melodies yeah. that it just feels like it's part of the song, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, they're. As the production goes up, it's pretty obvious, like quality or whatever. Like, and I would say some of this comes from they're getting into these, stu you know, they're recording a record now in a big studio that they were never, couldn't never get into. And so you get, you have stuff happen sonically, but it's pretty obvious that they're playing it live. Like, this, these are live records still. Yeah. I, yeah. They're, it, and it feels incredible, like really good. Yeah. And they yeah. said that, you know, um, or at least Griff said that, like, you know, when they were working on the songs for these records, like, they they road tested them, you know, to see how yeah. how crowds would react because because they were a little bit different. People weren't used to hearing them stretch and do things like that, probably. And I, I think that was smart. But, you know, that's why, you know, when we move into We're All Gonna Die, which is only a year later. For yeah. me, the way that I read that is like they must have been really road dogging those all your favorite bands tunes. Yeah. And then they probably were like so stoked on life and so stoked on what they were doing with music that they were like, I got another whole album full of music to do. And so like, I think, that, yeah, you know, but um, tell me about we're I all going to die. I would say too, this feels like that point where say it, the band changed, whatever. And I don't think that's negative at all. I, I think it's just like, you can feel it. It almost makes North Hills feel like an acoustic record from this point on. You know what I mean? Like there's yeah, a thing man. with the band where it's like it it becomes so crafted and like clever and jam bandy and like there's this weird stuff. I mean, time signatures and imp you just you go back to North Hills and you're like, this is like a folk record. It, it's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, man. I mean, that's it's completely accurate because. Now we've got Blake Mills working on this record, helping produce this record. So, yeah. so sonically, texturally, like arrangement wise, his fingerprint is on this, which also probably helped them grow. But then we've got yeah. the introduction of Lee Pardini bringing a whole new flavor yep. of keyboard playing, which he came he came from like the jazz super studied astute, like, you know, keyboard method. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, like yeah, one of one of us is like is the first song I heard and it knocked me out. So, yeah, we're all going to die. I remember I was into them at this point. I made a point um, like a nerd to buy. I went to the record store and bought the vinyl and listened to it on vinyl first just because because I thought it was fun and I was a nerd. And I like how slow records are. So I was like, you know, looking at the stuff, reading it and trying to act like I'm living in the 70s because I hate the modern world. So <laughs> it's like my rebellion against social media. But I remember sitting there and just being like, these guitars are wild. Like the textures and the, like as a pedal person, I was just like trying to dissect it. And I, and I, and immediately, like, I know that's a losing battle because of Blake Mills involvement. And like, he, he's, he's unorthodox. So it's like, in my head, I'm like, yeah, they're probably playing a fuzz through like a Roland Juno into a car stereo back out. You know, it's like the, and you can hear, it's just crazy sounding textures in the guitars. I love this record. Roll with the punches is such a. It's the best. It's my favorite song on there. No, it, I, it, it just has. Time. It's dolls all the way. Um, it has such a good groove. What do you think that sound is on Quitter? That like, like it makes what gonna, can we listen to it? Ah, yeah. We better not. We better we, not. Hold on. We, Let me turn we, it down man. really low. Hold on. I, I can cheat it. I can cheat the YouTube system. I'm, mute, I'm muting my mic. Okay, okay. 
<laughs> things we do. It's it's that I don't know. That's the thing. That's what I felt with this record is like I have no idea. I have no idea what some of this is. It's like that love Velcro that. fuzz type thing. You know what I mean? It's like it feels yeah. like that, but it's it's like palpable. It's like almost like I can taste the music. It's that good. Yeah. You know, it's so it, weird. It's a combination of like by this time being such a fan of Taylor's playing, but also knowing he's just so simple and like the best, like Telecaster, Treble Booster, Ant, Vibrato, like nothing just just such a simple player and it's all in him and then you hear some of this record becomes like like what like what is he doing it's like hard to imagine him even engaging like some of this with the guitar i have no idea there's a lot of sounds on this record i have no idea which is hilarious like i feel like i can listen to records and just mm -hmm. pick them apart um but yeah, we're all going to die. And I love that photograph. As a photographer, that photograph's a classic. It's like a cult classic photo of the lady in the tornado. Yeah. It's so when, when was that taken, Josh? Like, how old is that photo? I think it's I think it's from the 90s. And it's like, there's, it's a pretty famous photo. It's, it's a hilarious photo. Like this, it's like yeah. a girl in a sweatshirt, like standing there. And there's a freaking tornado right behind <laughs> There's yeah. the comedy, like the irony and the clever comedy of Dawes. It's like that cover feels so right. Yeah. Like his lyrics and like how he's kind of, he's, he's very like sarcastic and witty. And that cover, I it, not, not enough people talk about cover art. That one's like, it's good. I it's love spot it. on, man. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that that record too, like when you're talking about like roll with the punches, for instance, I did not know this, and I find this such a fascinating, fun, like, tidbit fact. But I thought that was just an overdriven Hammond, like an overdriven B3. And it's not. Yeah. It's a clav. Yeah. It's a clav with some guitar pedal. Lee couldn't remember what guitar pedal it was, but some guitar pedal going through the that, Leslie. Yeah. So all that, wah, 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 all that stuff, oh. that's a clavinet going through a Leslie with some guitar I didn't pedal. know that. I need to go listen to that. I, I remember you doing that, but I never got to listen to the episode. That's cool. Oh, man. So cool. And then um, Passwords, I feel like it's uh, weird because it, it's like a dip in the valley and almost in a way. Like it changes a little bit again. Pa yeah. I remember Passwords was hard for me to listen to. I don't know why. I just never, I never like, you know over a band's long career sometimes you're just i there was it could have just been i wasn't listening to a bunch of music and i was just bored or something i remember like i have a relationship with passwords which is like when i listened back through i was like did i listen to it like i literally had a moment where i was like have i heard this song and be like oh yeah i've heard this song but it was the least listened to record when i came back around to do this episode with you but then mm -hmm. I was like, oh, this song, I remember going, this is amazing. But I just never listened to this record much, which is yeah. sad because it's like, like Crack the Case, uh, a telescope is amazing. Like, it's it's amazing. Yeah, Josh, I wrote, first of all, I just wrote those two songs down. But Telescope has one of the coolest, most inventive drum grooves of all the Dawes discography. That yeah. that drum groove, yeah. yes, absolutely, is so cool and so inventive. Because he could have played a backbeat or something different in that tune. He could have done something totally different. And yeah. when I was when I was talking to him, I said, you know, that song, like really, like the, talk about like you as a drummer within this band and your voice and your fingerprint. He was like, man. Thank you so much because I feel like that's the bathroom Dawes song. And I was like, I'm not going to the bathroom if you guys play that and I'm there. Like, I want to watch no, you play I, that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? Um it's hard to imagine they have a go to the bathroom moment. Yeah. I know. It's it's just I, I, yeah. Living in the future, time flies. I mean, I I really think that record is solid. I think that I didn't listen to it enough in the moment. And as I've gone back, I keep playing it because it feel it's funny it kind of feels new in the sense of i've worn some of the records out so i like it's almost like the new record right now the new dawes record for me is this record because i didn't give it enough attention so it feels pretty fresh yeah
So do you feel like in terms of hierarchy of this, would you place this passwords would be kind of towards the lower kind of rung of like your hierarchy of dolls records, or is it moving its way up now because you're, it's fresh. I, I like it a lot. I, I don't know. It feels, um, I guess it is still lower in the fact that I'm not so familiar with it, you know, but it, it's a really great record. And for some reason, I didn't really dive into it. I don't, you know, I guess I was just busy, which sounds ridiculous. But like, yeah, I just didn't get to this record, which is odd. You're a little busy. Yeah. That's that's right. fair. <laughs> you're, yeah. you're quite busy. Yeah. But even, Fe like, even like my big, my most favorite, I mean, there's there's a couple Pearl Jam records that feel, that feel that way to me. As much as I love that band, I just like, ah, I had to, I never really, I never really, really listened to this because of whatever was going on that year. And you kind of move on and forget, you know, it just happens. Backspacer is like that for me, if I'm honest. Yeah. You know. Yeah, yeah, it's it's interesting how you do that with with bands, even the bands you love the most or whatever. You can kind of just sleep on something. Yeah, yeah. it's and not again, a reflection of the record. No, not at all. And again, like with passwords, feed the fire. That song live. Mm -hmm. If anyone, yeah. I don't know if this is still up on YouTube, but you know how I think this was like it might have been this past like winter twenty three um you know january march ish somewhere around there they played at the beacon theater and they did a like a live cast of the show okay lee's b3 solo at the end of that song uh yeah i thought that dude was just the whole stage was gonna just implode like just transcend he, yeah he went ballistically like and he it, it was almost like this <laughs> I don't know, man. Like he was in another world and in another plane and you could see all the guys in the band knew it too. Yeah. That's yeah. what's fun watching them play. So everyone should go check out if you can find feed the fire from the beacon theaters. I think it was 23. I'm pretty sure. Cause we watched it here in the house. I made my wife and my daughter watch it with me. Um, my wife didn't like it so much. My daughter, that's when she fell in love with dolls, but, uh, yeah. But go back and check that out if you can find it, because he absolutely destroys that solo. Um, That's cool. All right. Good luck with whatever. 2020. Good luck with whatever. And don't fix me or my my two picks off that for the playlist. Uh, it's it's I listen to that one a lot. I love that record. It, it's hard. It's like like I said I would like, where does it fit? It's an interesting thing. Like if I were to put these and I, I don't know that I could like favorite to last. I feel like there's a chunk of them that kind of just like are all one moment. Like, I don't know what to do with it all. It's like, I don't have a favorite. I don't have a least favorite. That record's really good. Um, mm -hmm. They feel, they feel, I, you know, it's cheesy, but like they just feel like they're super comfortable on that record or whatever that means. Like the songs just feel great. There's nothing that's like, oh my God, I'm like blown away. It's just like great Dawes music, like which yeah. I love. Yeah. It's a case I of like when you're, when you have bands, it's okay sometimes to be like, man, I don't want them to make other music. Like just make that again. They yeah. can't, like that feels like that for me and that's fine. Yeah. That's fair. I mean, there's, and I, I think that, you know, still feel like a kid. That's like a branch out of like, it almost feels like kitschy, poppy, like, like the Ben Foldsy type vibe, you know, the, yeah, ba, 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 da, ba, 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 like that kind of stuff. Like, I haven't heard them do that before. Yeah. yeah. In that moment. And I was like, yes, this feels great. That's and, true. That's true. You know, that's true. Actually, you're right on that. That is, that is actually very different. Yeah. Yeah. But it's yeah, still that's pretty. fair. I mean, in that sense, it's pretty wild. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then like the storytelling, like even the song, good luck with whatever, like storytelling on that record is so good. Me, especially if you yeah. go back and listen to like before they recorded this and, and Taylor was playing like acoustic versions of me, especially, and then to hear it translated into a full band thing. It, it's that's another one of my I haven't faves. done that. Yeah. Oh, dude, it's that's it's cool. so great. So yeah, great. good luck with whatever my favorite track for sure i actually and again that cover art is so fun i love that cover art 
Yeah, me too. Um, the badge, it's so good. Yeah, so good. I mean, there. That's the thing too. Like, whoever's, I don't know who who in the band or who's working with like doing the art and like coming up with like the conceptual ideas for what they do with that stuff. Like, I made this shirt. I had my friend print a shirt because I didn't. Yeah. They didn't have shirts that I would want to buy at this one show. So I was like, I'm gonna make my own. Um, yeah. But but like they're they're pretty cool. Like the same way with Pearl Jam, they're really good at like whoever's dealing with their art and reaching the fans and, yeah. and you know what I mean? They're, they're so good at connecting with their fans too. I think that is why people love them. So, um, but anyway, yeah, they're these, they, they understand like the fan base. They're a band that's, they're a type of band that's more and more rare, which is their, there's probably people well more much better spoken on this in musicology but it's getting harder and harder to find bands who aren't like that didn't start in the 60s that are like the band is more than the records like it's more than like a song like you want to go see them live there's a culture there's a crowd there's a we call it like the cult following there's a club you're in there. Like it's a package. It's like the band is like the product and you love it all. Mm -hmm. It's harder and harder to see that nowadays. Pearl Jam's yeah. always done that. Like they're masters of like the 10 club. I mean, it's such a special relationship with fans. That's yeah. why people like me and you, we hang around. It's like, it's more than the records really. Yeah. Dawes is a little, they're a little special in that. I mean, huge bands nowadays like even a cold player somebody they don't do that they're just massive and they kind of like they make fine music every once in a while now you know i've lost track over the last few records but as big as that band is you don't really think of them like but like a band like dawes you're like you feel invested like yes it's, it's more of a yeah i don't know what that is i don't know what that term is but it's it's pretty rare it's really rare yeah it's so fun to and like anyone who hasn't seen them this year when they get back on the road and, and get things back together. <clears throat> I highly recommend even if you've never listened to their music, going to a live show <laughs> like Damn. oh gosh, it's oh, it's yeah. just like it'll blow your mind. Um, how good they are. And you know, another great thing too is since we're gonna roll in a, in uh Doom Scroller, that in the round yeah. video, watch that yes. first if you want to see what these guys are capable of live. Those are all just straight through tunes. They just play through the whole record and it will give you a really yeah. good, you know, um, snapshot of what they're going to be like if you see them in a room, you know. Um, but again, here comes some Frank Zappa and some jam band stuff. Okay, yeah. Misadventures of Doom Scroller. It's a crazy record. Like someone else's cafe slash Doom Scroller tries to relax is incredible yes like it's it's like zappa meets dawes i don't know man. it's such a crazy song yeah. and it's nine and a half minutes <laughs> and you just like it's like two movements it's amazing and i just love the concept of the doom scrolling like there it's like it's like a societal like statement you know it's just such a it's an amazing it's amazing so on yeah. point because I could like talk this about this yeah well let's talk for a little bit i mean i i think that the thing people should know about this is like this is mid pandemic like yes. this record and like so yeah. i don't know what the process of them recording this record mm -hmm. was like and all that stuff in terms of like people being safe because they must have started in the very beginning of the pandemic when they recorded this um but to like put out a product like this when you're talking about North Hills and then you're talking about Doom Scroll, it's wild. It is like yin and yang, man. It is totally different. I would throw this in the bucket for craziest contrast within a single band, like Doom Scroller back to North Hills. I mean, you can look at like YouTube Boy and then go to Octung Baby, but it's like, it's you, like, there's something about this that's crazy. It mm -hmm. feels like, are these the same humans? Like, it's wild. Yeah, and, and I forgot about it during the pandemic. That's a, that's a huge thing. And it's, 
it's also like there's something in the when that song shifts, I go full like blue oyster cult as well. Like it has <laughs> that thing where you're like, What? What is this song? And you're like seven minutes in at this point, and you hear another song happen. Mm -hmm. It's really yeah. cool. I have to say, I mean, I so Robert Keeley was on last week and we talked about fish because he loves okay. fish. Yeah. And I'm a huge fan too. I mean, I toured in a jam band for a long time. And to see to to fall in love with Dawes when I did to come in late and then to see them immediately put this record out right after I got into them. I was like, okay. yes, yes. Like, because I felt like I was like, oh, my gosh, this band is about to kind of blow up in the jam band scene, too, I bet. Yeah. And they yeah. started to, you know. I'm like, comes in waves is my favorite. Yeah, it's definitely my favorite song in here. Oh, yeah. I, I love that groove again, that groove and like the vocal melody coming comes in waves is like this really comfortable singer songwriter pop song that's has a little weirdness on it. And then it's like the record's just so it's just part of how weird this record feels like not weird. It's part of how diverse this record feels, I think. Yeah, going from Doom Scroller to Comes in Waves is like really wild, but it but they like sound the same, and it's weird. It's like how do those songs sound? How do those songs fit? They do. It's weird. Yeah, because like from sound that no one made to Cafe, very different, very very different. And I mean, everything is permanent is probably my yeah. fave on this record. I just when when it's, I heard that line, playlist, yeah. yeah, when I heard that line, did you really need to cry or be seen crying? I was like, what? <laughs> like, and talk about like that whole song is navigating the world, navigating social media, use of social yeah. media, our faces stuck in screens. And like, it's such a good social commentary, <clears throat> yeah. too. So and those little little things that that Griff does, like he has those little fills before, you know, lines in the verses and stuff like that. It doesn't feel like overplaying. It feels like it's serving the song in the perfect way. Yeah. Um, I I would throw this in if no one's ever asked me, and they never will. But Misadventures <laughs> of Doom Scroller is my favorite pandemic record. There we go. Okay. I think I think, it, I think it's absolutely my because it's like straight up. There's something about Dawes. And just the writing and his lyrics and the pandemic and like, it's just, it's like the perfect record from that period. It's like a time capsule. It's so good. It's yeah. like you saw the band like kind of say, screw it. We're going to go jam band in the middle of a pandemic, write about the weirdness of it all. And it's like, really, it's really fun. Yeah. It's like, what do we have to lose? We may never play again or something. You just feel this like vibe that's like unhinged. It's really that, great. That is a really great perspective. And, and then like this obviously isn't in the discography list, but like that rooftop, that LA rooftop record, yeah. when they did that again in the middle of the pandemic, like you could hear the like joy in them getting a chance to do that again. So like saying right. that and thinking like, Oh no, like we may not be able to do this again. What's going to happen is we're all going to implode. Yeah. That's a perfect. Cause they're alive. And they're yeah. like a live band. And it's really interesting how that record feels in the context of like a historical moment. It's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. And that version of when my time comes on that album on the live from the rooftop, yeah. Yeah. that is just, I mean, that's like the quintessential version of that, of that song. It's yeah. so good. And that's like a greatest hits. Like if anybody's not like hip to Dawes, like go check out the live from a rooftop. Um, Cause it, it is good. like, yeah, it's like a greatest hits from the whole discography, except for Doom Scroller. No songs from Doom Scroller, but <clears throat> everything else is on there. Yeah, so, man. And then we have to give a shout out because, or I have to give a shout out to you first for exposing me to that Four Moons song. Um, that Mandy Moore last. What's that last yeah. record called? That she put out. What was so, it? yeah, I think we. It's weird because like this is about Dawes, but. It's so bizarre to just go into like you need to listen to Mandy Moore. It like makes no sense. Right. 
So the context yeah. is, um, and this is this was interesting for me because I had I had never crossed paths with Mandy, but I had worked with Ryan, and then they go through a divorce, and then years go by, and then Mandy and um, you know obviously Mandy and Taylor they're made to have a kid. They're, they're like an amazing couple, and like it's been cool to see those relationships change, but. Dawes basically is her band on her last two records to some extent. You know, it's like mm -hmm. like Madison Cunningham plays with her as well. You got a lot of that LA crew, Mike Viola is part. Is that his last name? Yeah. Yeah, Viola. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mike. I think it's he's Mike in, Viola. Yeah, yeah. He's in the four matter. rooms. Viola. Yeah, yeah. But there's this tie-in, which is if you like Dawes, you really should listen to Mandy Moore's in real life. And then that would be the 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 newest one, and then you have Silver Landings. But in real life, has a song called Four Moons. It's so beautiful. It's like my favorite version of it is the YouTube video I sent you. It's yeah. her, Taylor, and Mike, and it's like they're in a white box playing the song. It's it's so cool because Mandy Moore for me is we like it's weird for me because like as a teenager, you know, Mandy Moore is like we're all similar ages here. I remember Mandy Moore being like the the girl the like teenage girl on MTV singing Sugar or whatever that song Candy. Candy. I'm missing yeah. you like candy or whatever. It's like I'm never listening to this. You know, I'm like really? listening to uh Battle of Los Angeles and Vitalogy and she's singing about <laughs> <Yeah>. candy. <laughs> but now I'm like 41 and there's this crazy path and Daw, you know, she marries him and and her records, and then like my my daughter also. My daughter turned sixteen yesterday, so there's this other parallel nice. thing with Mandy Moore. It's like she's the voice of like what's the Disney movie? Uh, uh, Tangled. Uh, yeah, it's like Mandy Moore in my head is Tangled, yeah. which my daughter would play endlessly to the point of like my brain was numb. Anyway, it's just funny. And now you come around, I'm like. 41 i'm like these mandy moore records are sick and it's like the <laughs> weirdest thing I, like i don't know what to do with that but i think yeah. if you get into cause you have to there's a there's a there's a branch here which is like really cool mandy moore has always made records she was attempting to do more records like these but she could never work through it with ryan and that whole thing and then like now she's like it's amazing. It's amazing to hear what she's capable of with this band helping her and mm -hmm. her husband. It's like yeah. she's incredible. Like, oh, for sure. I just never knew that. Nobody did. No, and not I in our like... camp. I would say, like guys like me and you, we were never gonna listen to Mandy Moore. But now it's like, crap. She's like, she's great. It's like really. Oh my cool. gosh. I, there's like a twist of fate there that's really bizarre. Um, I think. Anyway. When you sent that to me and I listened to it, I told you I listened to it like four times that day. And the first time I listened yeah. to it, I'm not I'm not gonna lie, I got misty. It it's like that touching. Like it is a deep, deep yeah. song. So it makes you think it's about your kids. Beautiful. I mean, if you're a dad, if you're a dad, it's like I start thinking about my family and, and my dad just passed away in September. So it's like I have a lot of feelings about like mortality and about being a dad myself. And yeah, but when I you know, and when I heard that, I was like, oh, wow, this is really powerful. And my daughter is sends it cool. every night in the shower. Every night in the shower, she's in there. I can hear you. Yeah. Like every night. So it's like, yeah, you know, yeah. it's my good. daughter's really. similar. Four moons. Like I would, I remember like I'd go up and I would like tuck them in and stuff. And my daughter had this run of like six months where she played that song and like, I think she would play in real life just on repeat. And it was just like, it's cool. It, it's a, it's a really cool personal part of like the Dawes love is that you have this really interesting Mandy Moore thing that like, I don't know. It's just odd. It's like kind of special and weird. Mm -hmm. uh, like our, you know, our kids are in, it's just bizarre. It's like, it's such a cool story Yeah, to have like, to have such an interesting detour that's still connected. I think that's unique. Yeah. And thank you for, I mean, I would never have known. I never would have listened to it unless you sent that to me. So it's like, yeah, I mean, I mean you can go, you. you know, look at, 
look at the Wikipedia of these last two Mandy Moore records and the names you see on the records is so fun. It's like, wow, like, you know, just to see like Madison Cunningham playing guitar on these records to see most of the yeah. dolls band to see Mike on it. It's, it's pretty cool. I love it. I love that. And she has that crowd around her making records with her. Yeah. And the fact that, I mean, I, I had to talk about this with somebody the other day, but Madison is like a great in the making. We're like, we're witnessing a great in the making and it's yeah. super powerful. You know, it's crazy. It's just, man, it's nuts. Um, Hey, yeah. I don't want to do a lightning round get down, but I have a rapid fire thing I wanted to do with you and I have some good questions. So All right, here we go. Here we go. Since it's Christmas time. Favorite Christmas song. Okay. All right. Name What's your a favorite Christmas, Christmas song? song? Your oh, fa favorite, favorite Christmas, Christmas song? song? Oh, this is so hard. It's supposed to be fast answers. Well, you know, uh, it's favorite, super, I mean. Uh, favorite Christmas song. I, I like a lot of people struggle with Christmas music. I really like anything off that original Ray Charles Christmas record. Spirit of Christmas. <laughs> Dude, what I don't, the heck, man? Okay. That's the same thing for me, man. Same thing. Okay. Nobody's that song from National Lampoon's. Yeah. Yeah, it, yeah. Spirit of Christmas. That oh. record, I think it's just like Ray Charles is playing the songs with a band and it's real. Like, yeah. Yeah, so I don't good. know what else to say about it. Okay, cool. So what right. what uh what's your favorite like Christmas song that's a cover by a newer artist? Cover by a newer artist. I I can go all over the place with Christmas stuff, and I and I do I have a few records I listen to every year. Like Manchester Orchestra put out a really cool Christmas record, which is like covers, and it's weird to hear Manchester Orchestra doing Christmas music. That mm -hmm. one's cool. I I have this place of nostalgia and a place of irritation with the Sufjan Stevens Christmas stuff. I think oh, it's yeah. cool because it's so quirky and I do I do really enjoy him. So those obviously there's a lot of covers, but they're like wildly unique to those two artists. So I, I like those two records a lot. Okay. You know, Sufjan doing anything is Sufjan. Like Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh favorite Christmas movie. Uh, it's probably just Elf. Yeah. I, okay. That's a I great think, one. I, I think, yeah, I think it is Elf. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We'll All go right. with that. And then let's switch directions now. Favorite album of 2023. Oh, crap. <laughs> I was thinking <laughs> I'm probably going to do like my, a big record time episode, you know, and put it up by the end of the year. I have no freaking All right, well, let's idea. let let's save that. Um I'll, I'll say this. The new Peter Gabriel record, the IO. Oh. It's like already I'm obsessed and it just came out and it's it, it might be it. Yeah. The new it's, one. It's real good. It's I so wonderful to hear him putting out that record. Yeah. yeah. Dude, I just got introduced to Elbow that uh band oh. from the uk and oh, yeah. that guy sounds like because someone was like if you like dolls you should check out elbow and it's like peter gabriel singing like a dolls like it's like radiohead meets dolls i've with... never i've never considered how real that is yeah we should do a brit rock version of this eventually yeah we can do go off the rails yeah we can yeah um favorite wah pedal <clears throat> favorite wah pedal yeah. um I'm gonna I'm gonna say I don't have one. Really? Okay. All okay. right, that's fair. That's fair. I feel um, like I appreciate wah and I'll use it. You can hand me any wah and I'll be like, cool. Okay, that's fair. They yeah. do, they do yeah. they do the thing. Um, all right, so uh who shot first, Han or Greedo? Oh uh, Han. <laughs> yeah all right um what was the last mind-blowing meal you ate the last mind-blowing meal this should be easy why is it hard i don't know Sometimes it's hard. uh i don't know This is sad. 
I need to evaluate my eating. (laughs) I need to make meals more special, apparently. Okay, good revelation. I have no, I don't know. I'm sure I'll think of it when we hang up. Yeah, that's fine. All right, here's the last one. Uh, What is the your favorite thing about your job? Um, I I love kind of finding out facts about all these pedals, all this history, and attempting to preserve it and like make it static. Like, here's the fact. Here's what the internet has said since the '90s. Here's actually the fact, and like trying to do that and giving myself the rest of my life to do it whatever that looks like That's hopefully awesome. i got 50 more years to do it because it's a lot of crap yeah it is and you are doing yeah. it i mean you are fundamentally changing the way things are done <laughs> and people look at things in a good way so disrupting it cool. in a good way i would say um josh dude thank you so much man that's super fun uh everybody obviously i don't need Love to it. tell you this but like go check out jhs I have a bunch of JHS pedals and I love them all. Um, here's the website for that. Also, go check out Dawes. There's an Instagram yeah. thing for Dawes. Here's the website. Yeah. Buy their merch. Buy all that cool stuff. Um, I, think, I think this works. You can zoom oh, in on go. this. That's my <laughs> playlist. Check That's that my out. Dawes list. He held and it up earlier. You can. We can also toss it in the description. Be kind, rewind, and uh, oh, here's that show. Uh, uh, you know, if you want to check it out too, it's from um, the Beacon Theater. I'm gonna so watch there's it. that. Yeah. yeah, there's that. Uh, <laughs> to Mark and Josh, ever jam. We're not in the same state, so we have not. Maybe one day, but that would we have be not. fun. That would be really fun. I still think we need to do yeah. something where we uh, build a board for like the McCready sounds and build a board for Stone sounds. Yeah, that could be that could be super fun. Yeah. Yeah. So. We'll, well, figure a way to do that. Yeah. Well, dude, thank you again. Uh, this was super fun. I knew that we we could probably spend four hours talking about dolls, but we do not have that time, ladies oh, and gentlemen. But go listen to them. There's plenty of music. There's over four hours of music you can listen to and explore. So Easily. Anything else uh, you need to drop on the people before or anything to promote with JHS? You had a big, no, couple, just, you had a big uh, month. Had a big, busy month. Thanks to everybody with the Nauticlon. Just wild. We're we're doing great. We're we're on target with our schedule that I announced about that. If you've bought one, Merry Christmas, you know. Yeah, thanks for a great year. We appreciate it. Sweet. All right, everybody. Yeah. BV, thank you for moderating the chat. Everyone, take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. All right. We'll see you next time.